Friends, today is an incredibly special day at the office. Not only are we here with the BMW M2, we are here at Laguna Seca. So while we work on the full first drive review of this on that track, let's you and I go through a tech review and let's start with, well, the place we always start, the engine, but there's a hell of a lot to cover here. So let's get right into it. Now I'm one of these people that's fortunate to love what they do. Uh, I have now met a bunch of the engineers at BMW and let's just say they love what they do. And the proof is the changes that went in to make this engine. So BMW fanboys obviously know the M3, M4, uh, the S55 engine. So it starts with the same block, a three liter inline six, but this one's a single turbo, but this one is, it, it's a twin scroll. Now, what does that mean? Does they have adjustable impellers, that kind of stuff? No, actually what it is, is the exhaust manifold, they go and they take that from the S55, which basically breaks up the exhaust gases into two banks, but then it channels the air into the turbocharger in two separate, basically, runners that go into the impeller. Very cool. Then there are other bits that they have basically taken from the S55 engine. So let's start from the top. The intake is from the S55. The piston rings are from the S55. Uh, basically, the crankshaft bearings also from the S55. Now, put aside all of that, the coolest part that comes from the S55 is the oil sump and the oil extractor. So basically, there is a pump in the oil sump that controls the lubrication of the engine to basically take into account the additional lateral acceleration that they know this car is going to go through with people like you and me driving it. So what does that all add up to? So it's 365 horsepower that comes in at 6,500 RPM and 343 pound-feet of torque, which comes in at a stupid low 1,400 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 5,560. Now, this one is interesting and very similar to a car we just drove. Remember that Buick? Uh, this has overboost, so it goes all the way up to 369 pound-feet of torque and also right from 1,400 RPM. So, effectively what you have here is a single turbo version of the S55, but they've made a number of changes to make it really its own engine. Now let's put aside all that, and one of the big things that you have to, it's not just engineering more power out of cars like this, it's how do you cool and maintain that engine reliably. That is down here. Now, do you guys remember our Porsche Boxster GTS episode, and actually more recently, our Porsche Spider episode? That car, they have some more power to them, but really one of the big differences in how they derive more power to those cars is they get more cooling to the engine. And they kind of did the same things here. So number one, you've got a big radiator, obviously, and that's really not much different than other BMWs. But then there's an intercooler here, and then uh, BMW has separated it out to cool the actual water water in the car, there are basically two coolers here, one here and one here. Uh, then this car here, the car we're going to drive sadly is not a manual transmission, all they had was the DTC here at this program. So if you get the DCT car, there is a separate transmission cooler, so the transmission oil cooler is here, which is separate from all these other bits. So one, two, three, four, five different units in front to cool the combination of the engine and the transmission. Now let's put aside all the bits at the front and let's focus on some of the bits that affect driving dynamics. Now I could go over some of the very fancy bits like aluminum axles, 19 inch wheels, bigger brakes that are still metallic, uh, dynamic mode adjustments, all that kind of stuff. Let's put that all aside because really the biggest thing that affects what this car is in terms of balance, and we'll talk about really what it means on the track in the full first drive review episode, is the wheelbase and the weight. And the weight here, 3,295 pounds. So that's great and all, but let's put that in context. An M4, which is the coupe version, I still have a hard time saying M3 to M4, but the coupe version of the M4 
is 3,530 pounds. So this is 235 pounds lighter and it's a shorter wheelbase car. Now let's bring some of these bits back into it in terms of aluminum axles, some other light weighting, and that's when the car completely changes. How it changes, sadly, there's an embargo. I can't tell you that right now, but come back later this week, or actually early next week, where we're gonna give you the full first drive review of this car. Uh, and one thing I do have to note again is the one we're driving is a DCT. Sadly, there was no six-speed manual on offer here at this program, but the car is on offer with a six-speed manual, which I think we're gonna have to get that car uh, down in California, drive it in our little home bit with the actual six-speed manual transmission. Anyway, but I digress. So come back next week for the full first drive review on this track, which is starting to look like Monterey with the fog coming in off the ocean here. So that means, number one, I got to give the car back. And number two, I want to leave you with a question because this, this is a very exciting car for me. And you know, I used to be a BMW guy. I actually never told you this. I'm, I'm a Lotus guy now, but uh, back in the day, I had many BMWs. One of them was an M BMW. So my question to you is this. M BMW fans out there, let me know what BMW, M Power BMW you have, what you do with it, and what region of the world you live. Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, one word, Moto Man TV, one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I wanna leave you with two things. Uh, number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application from Apple iTunes or Google Play. Uh, and number two, uh, this, this has been an incredibly special day today, a very good day at the office. And maybe or maybe not, there have been some virtual reality cameras attached to this car going around the track. Uh, perhaps you will find out at a later point. Until then, bis später.